Registered Phenomena Code 577 Item Type Object Lethality Rating White Hazard Types Regenerative Abstract Possessing both fungal and pseudo-anomaly traits, the species offers unique properties and research opportunities. After significant testing, it has proven the potential to be an excellent renewable food source under the correct conditions. As the anomaly poses little to no hazard under almost all conditions, continued research on RPC-577 has shown great promise. Safe Handling and Usage Researchers should be familiarized with transcendental breakfast anomalies before interaction with RPC-577. Fume hoods are mandatory for sample experimentation. Researchers are to wear fitted masks, gloves, and protective eyewear. Caution must be taken to not allow inhalation of any resulting fumes. A respirator is suggested. Samples are to be stored in airtight containers within ventilated cabinets. Description. RPC-577 instances first resemble commonplace mist and fog particles congregating together within gusts of wind. Manifestations appear completely natural and non-anomalous in appearance, to touch in a chemical makeup when examined under ordinary circumstances. RPC-577 instances will form in any environment where either mist or fog is created. Instances will be formed within fog regardless of the presence of liquid or ice particle fog. Combinations of bitterate class medications allow for the proper perception of RPC-577. By blocking the conversion of cadoptosin to anoptosin and promoting the catabolism of both neurotransmitters, bitterics are found to be successful. When properly perceived, RPC-577 instances appear as opaque, nebulous formations with a distinct, fluffed, creamy texture. Individual instances range in appearance from light yellow to cream yellow in color and have been observed to form within the proper environment in sizes from approximately 20 cm cubed up to 200 m cubed. RPC-577 instances typically form and drift within small transient eddies within mist and fog. However, instances may also form without wind and low-pressure atmospheres. Instances of RPC-577 will combine with each other if they are directed together by currents. When properly perceived, RPC-577 instances are tangible to the observer. The anomaly is often reported as having a slick or oleaginous feel when touched. The density of instances is mainly dependent upon the temperature, wind speed, air pressure, and the density of the surrounding fog or mist. When palpated, the instances can range from barely perceptible to dense and sponge-like. Higher wind speed. Air pressure and water vapor presence correlates with denser and larger instances, while the inverse remains true for smaller instances. RPC-577 instances can range from 1.309 kg per meter cubed up to values of 2.374 kg per meter cubed under 1.225 kg per meter cubed and 15 degrees Celsius. Samples examined under the influence of Vitorex yield significantly different results than those examined without. While a majority of the chemical makeup of the instances is formed from water, the samples notably include significant volumes of denatured ovalbumin, conalbumin, and ovomucin proteins, as well as the fatty acids oleic acid, palmitic acid, and linoleic acid. Varying amounts of lutein, zeaxanthin, and hydrogen sulfide can be found in all samples as well. Masses of spores are found within the outer components of RPC-577 instances. When germinated in acceptable conditions, the spores will begin to grow mycelium, which will continue on to grow the main visible components of RPC-577, thus creating an RPC-577 instance. This is generally believed to be a form of fruiting body. The spores are most similar in form to the Palabolus crystallinus, however, the two are not directly related. The hyphae formed by RPC-577 are approximately 35 micrometers in diameter, leaving it undetectable to human vision. The range of various mycelium formations are thought to be potentially massive. Researchers estimate that the individual organism could reach up to 10 km squared in area and form multiple fruiting bodies. The fruiting bodies of RPC-577 instances are readily edible, though subjects must be under mild influence of Vitorex for this to be made possible.
Per each 100 grams, RPC-577 contains 148 calories, and are composed of 11 grams of fat, 1.6 grams of carbohydrates, and 10 grams of protein. One serving of RPC-577 contains 203% of the recommended daily doses of cholesterol. Routine consumption of RPC-577 is not recommended. A bridge testing log. Repetitive escalation tests have been removed. For all testing logs, see document RPC-577 testing logs. Test results. Rat trials phase one. Three laboratory rats have provided 5 mL of RPC-577 and observed for three weeks following. All animals showed normal behavior with no health deficits. Chimpanzee Trials Phase 4 Three chimpanzees were fed four servings of RPC-577 every day for six months as a replacement meal. All behavior and health stayed regular with the exception of a rise in cholesterol. Human Trials Phase 1 CSD-362 was administered Vitorix and presented with one servant of RPC-577 on a plate, a fork, and a knife. CSD-362 consumed the substance, reported that it quote, tastes like normal, unquote. The subject exhibited normal behavior and health following the test. Human Trials Phase 5 CSD-763 was administered Vitorix daily and presented with servings of RPC-577 for every meal for a period of three months. The subject reported no differentiation from non-anomalous scrambled eggs. The subject showed normal behavior and health throughout the testing period, though blood analysis showed a cholesterol increase by the conclusion of testing. Conclusion. Consistently in all chemical, physical, and taste testing, the components of RPC-577 are indistinguishable from the components of mundane scrambled eggs. Through some bizarre coincidence, they contain the exact same chemical structures, ratios, and formations. The only differentiating aspects are the observational pseudo-anomaly and fungal factors which have been proven safe. It is this testing committee's determination that RPC-577 is safe for human consumption. Grady McCaffrey Exploration Log An investigatory research operation began on October 6, 2019, in which senior researcher Sanders Mayer joined the AEDFS Tarkas as part of a routine Site Mars 01 crew rotation. The purpose of the excursion was to determine the presence of behavior of RPC-577 on Mars. After arrival, an exploration crew accompanied researcher as Mayer south of the Noctis Fasi. The area had been identified as a common location on the planet for thick fog to form. OL Site Mars 577, a pressurized inflatable testing station, was established at the northernmost point of the canyon. Researchers Mayer selected Liptocitarin and Neoopticin and administered them to himself at 445 MR. At 5 o'clock MR, the exploration crew departed. The crew included senior researcher Sanders Mayer. Expert Mountaineer Lavelle Phillips, and MST Whiskey 7 personnel Baldwin Barker and Iveta Slovakova. Begin Log 50036 The body cameras turn on. Four total camera feeds are available. A dark, barren landscape is visible. 50042 Iveta turns towards the group. The white suits are silhouetted by the structure behind them. The visors are dark. They walk slowly towards the canyon. Extraneous logs removed. 50205. They arrive at the canyon edge. The canyon is filled with shadow. Anyone see fog yet? I sure don't. It's still too cold. Once the sun gets a little closer, it will come. Lavelle Phillips begins to survey the land. Yes, nothing will come yet. Soon we will see. You'll see, you mean. <laughs> yes, I guess you're right, ma'am. I see where we are meant to start our descent. It should be a simple enough time. Remind me again why we can't just jump? I wish we could try. <laughs> <laughs> the group grows silent as they wait for fog formation. Each member of the group roams slightly, observing the landscape. Here it comes, gents and lady. His camera feed quality is insufficient to pick up on the beginning formations. 
Sander is Mayor's body camera shifts south. There she is indeed. What do you see, Doc? Just a little bit of the yellow right now. It's quite a thin formation for now, but it's sure here. As Mayor steps towards the canyon, thin fog is beginning to show on the body cameras. Lavelle Phillips crouches down and begins to drill a bolt into the crossbedding, securing their descent point. Malwin Barker alternates observing Phillips and his mayor. Slovakova watches the fog expand with his mayor. The fog is spreading fast. It's quite beautiful. It really is quite the sight, even without getting drugged. That it is, Missy. Lavelle Phillips finishes drilling and placing the bolts. He clips an anchor into place and pulls it tightly. The anchor straps drift to the ground. Phillips secured the climbing rope that was hooked to his side. Get around, kids. We're ready to go. Barker, his mayor, and Slovakova all walk to Phillips. The group attaches their harnesses to the climbing rope and turn. Phillips at the bottom. Phillips turns around to examine the slope. Though still night, the sky is beginning to show the deep purple signs of approaching dawn. The slope is approximately 45 degrees of smooth shale leading down into the canyon. Mist obscures the base of the canyon. The group begins the descent into the canyon. Extravagant logs removed. The group is now approximately 5 meters above the canyon floor. Phillips descends into the mist, the formation still thin at this time. As Mayor reaches out and touches the mist. Beautiful. Tell us about it, Doc. It's a light, fluffy yellow, but the formations… the formations are tremendous, bigger than I have ever seen. Slovakova forms an okay gesture as best as her glove allows. As Mayor retrieves a sampling syringe from his belt and takes a sample. Alright, fellas, let's keep this moving. As Mayor stores the sample, and the group finishes the descent onto the canyon floor. The landscape is still dark. The sky is becoming lighter into the typical pink of a Martian sunrise. As the group frees their harness from the rappel line, the mist continues to thicken. Phillips secures the bottom of the rappel line under loose shale. Barker dusts himself off in an exaggerated motion. Where to now, Esh? It looks thicker this way. We'll follow it. As Mayor motions towards the southeast. Sure thing. The group walks in the suggested direction with his mayor leading. Extravagant logs removed. The group traverses the canyon over the next 27 minutes, taking multiple samples. RPC-577 becomes progressively thicker as they follow his mayor, manifesting in decreased visibility and frost condensation forming on the camera lenses. The dark canyon stretches above them as the walls become steeper. We must go down there. This is where it is the thickest. As Mayor points down a recession east of the group towards what appears to be an outcropping in the rock. Shoe in, boss. Phillips secures a second descent line onto a large boulder. Ever seen mist like this before, Aveta? Never this thick, sir. Phillips finishes anchoring the descent line. Alright, we're losing Dawn. Hop on the line. The group secures their harnesses and descends towards the outcropping. The group finishes a quick descent and is able to get a better view of the outcropping. The entrance of a previously concealed cave mouth comes into view. Well, holy shit. My god. The group hurriedly releases their harnesses and proceeds towards the cave. The entrance reveals that the cave descends in a variety of paths. The mist is increasingly thick, decreasing visibility considerably now. Don't lose your head, Doctor. Wait up. Ah. Uh. Give me that last rope, arrow level. Phillips hands his mayor the remaining climbing rope. As mayor secures an end of the rope to a rock and enters the cave alone. As mayor turns on his helmet light. Due to the decreased visibility during this point from the combination of frost particles and mist illuminated by the bright lights, the following description is taken from his mayor's personal report of the expedition. I entered the cave and I turned on my lights. It was one of the most beautiful things my eyes have ever been graced with. The entire walls of the place were covered in the most intricate etchings. They depicted all manner of breakfast foods. Eggs. Bacon. Toast. No, not just these delicacies. There were beautiful depictions of jam, juice, milk, 
hundreds upon hundreds of cows, and so many other breakfast delights. This labyrinthian art covered each and every inch of the winding cave. As I stood in awe, I eventually looked closer, and noticed that there were not just carvings in the cave walls, but that it was also covered in millions upon millions of 577 spores, layers upon layers. I wandered through the halls in shock at the discovery, taking in the wealth and richness of artistry on display. I eventually was able to stem my excitement and retrieve more samples from all throughout the cave and returned to the group to report my findings. This discovery and my first time in the cave alone shall forever be one of my fondest memories. Sander. Extravagant logs removed. After the brief exploration of the cave, the group returned to OL Site Mars 577 to report their findings. Afterward, Geological examination of the samples retrieved from within the cave are determined to be approximately 50 million years old. These by far outdate all other known instances of RPC-577, and are now believed to be the source of RPC-577 itself. The cave has been designated RPC-577-S and lines this information. The massive network of caves is still being excavated and explored under Dr. S. Mayer's guidance. October 1, 2020 Note, The partial excavation of RPC-577-S has revealed the following various artifacts. A rudimentary skillet carved from orthopyrazine, chromite, masculinite, and iron-rich carbonate, dated 34 million years old. What appears to be a spatula formed from unknown metals, dated 25 million years old. 42 empty glass jam jars with checkered lids. One fossilized orange slice. A large shrine carved into a cave wall. The pillars are carved in imitation of bacon strips, supporting a pancake-shaped altar. Upon the altar sits a dense formation of RPC-577 mycelium and a single cracked eggshell. It is worth noting that teams approaching the altar with an RPC-577-S generally experience an increased level of hunger. Tests are currently underway to determine if this shared experience is indeed an anomalous effect or simply the known natural response to being surrounded by food imagery. Notable Researchers Sander is Mayor, Viterix Department. RPC-577 Senior Researcher Background in Viterix and Mycology Grady McCaffrey Anomaly Experimentation Team Senior Researcher Background in Culinary and Gustatory Anomalies <laughs>